Sutra, Disciples of the Buddha, what is the Bodhisattva Mahasattva's treasury of wisdom? These Bodhisattvas have a true knowledge of form, a true knowledge of the accumulation of form, a true knowledge of the extinction of form, and a true knowledge of the path that leads to the extinction of form. Commentary, Disciples of the Buddha, the Bodhisattva Forest of Merit and Virtue, again calls out and says, All of you disciples of the Buddha, what is the Bodhisattva Mahasattva's treasury of wisdom? What is the treasury of wisdom that the great Bodhisattva among Bodhisattvas is complete with? These Bodhisattvas have a true knowledge of form. These Bodhisattvas have true and actual knowledge of the form skanda. That is to say that they truly and actual totally understand that the form skanda is false and empty. From the existence of the form skanda, suffering accumulation, extinction, and the way are all produced. These are the Four Noble Truths. These Bodhisattvas totally understand the Four Noble Truths. So the text says, These Bodhisattvas have a true knowledge of form. They are tied up by the accumulation of suffering. These Bodhisattvas have a true knowledge of the accumulation of form. The truth of accumulation is characterized by the beckoning nature of the form skanda. The Bodhisattvas have true actual knowledge of this truth. These Bodhisattvas also have a true knowledge of the extinction of form. They actually understand the certification and attainment of the truth of its extinction within the form skanda. And they have a true knowledge of the path that leads to the extinction of form. These Bodhisattvas thoroughly understand the methods for cultivation and attainment of the way with respect to the form skanda, and so they have a genuine understanding of the method that leads to certification to the truth of extinction, and so with respect to the four noble truths of suffering, accumulation, extinction, and the way, we want to have true, factual, and real knowledge. The bodhisattvas know that the skanda of form is empty. Sutra, they have a true knowledge of feeling, thinking, activity, and consciousness. A true knowledge of the accumulation of feeling, thinking, activity, and consciousness. A true knowledge of the extinction of feeling, thinking, activity, and consciousness. And a true knowledge of the path that leads to the extinction of feeling, thinking, activity, and consciousness. Commentary, people are unable to understand that the five skandhas of form feeling, thinking, activity, and consciousness, and the four noble truths of suffering, accumulation, extinction, and the way are actually perfectly fused without any obstruction. They cannot comprehend their interconnection. Consequently, all different kinds of attachments are produced just like the silk worm when it pulls out silk and ties up its own body. If you understand the principle involved here, then you'll attain liberation. If you attain liberation, then you won't be confused by suffering, accumulation, extinction, and the way. You'll be able to stop suffering, cut off accumulation, aim for extinction, and cultivate the way. If you don't understand the principle involved here, then you won't know about stopping suffering or about cutting off the accumulation of suffering. You won't be able to aim for extinction or be able to cultivate the way. You can apply the four truths to the form skanda and understand that it is empty. You can do the same with, uh, with the skandhas of feeling, thinking, activity, and consciousness. If you understand this, then your self-nature won't be covered over by the five skandhas. It will emit light. You will illumine and feel the five skandhas as empty and cross over all suffering and difficulty. Feeling is defined as reception. Form is described as hard and solid. It has shape and appearance. The feeling skandha has no form or appearance. There is reception or sensation. If one is attached to the form skandha, then the feeling skandha arises out of that attachment. One becomes greedy for feelings. One wants to take in the experience 
the of the forms can the the desire to feel or experience some state gives rise to the scandal of thinking. One starts thinking all the time. From this constant thinking, the scandal of activity arises. It is characterized by the constant shifting and flowing of thoughts which never stop. Once there is the scandal of activity, then discrimination arises. There come into being all kinds of discriminations, opinions, prejudices and understandings, all of which are functions of the conscious mind. This is the scandal of consciousness. They have a true knowledge of feeling, thinking, activity and consciousness. In the same way, these bodhisattvas truly and actually understand and penetrate the scandals of feeling, thinking, activity and consciousness. A true knowledge of the accumulation of feeling, thinking, activity and consciousness. They also have true and actual knowledge of the beckoning feelings within the scandal of feeling, thinking, activity, and consciousness as revealed in the truth of accumulation. They have a true knowledge of the extinction of feeling, thinking, activity, and consciousness, and a true knowledge of the path that leads to the extinction of feeling, thinking, activity, and consciousness. They also have a genuine understanding of the extinction of the accumulation of suffering and of the way that leads to that extinction. You must also genuinely comprehend, perceive, and recognize this. Then it won't be possible to be confused by any states. To not be turned by any states is to be able to turn the states. Then, ultimately, you'll be able to obtain the unsurpassed body fruit. Sutra, they have a true knowledge of ignorance, a true knowledge of the accumulation of ignorance, a true knowledge of the extinction of ignorance, and a true knowledge of the path that leads to the extinction of ignorance. They have a true knowledge of craving, a true knowledge of the accumulation of craving, a true knowledge of the extinction of craving and a true knowledge of the path that leads to the extinction of craving. Commentary The five skandhas and the four noble truths have been explained up to this point. We should all truly and totally understand this. Now the text talks about the twelve links of conditioned co-production. The first of these twelve is ignorance. They have a true knowledge of ignorance. One should truly have an understanding of ignorance in relation to the truth of suffering. What is ignorance? It's just not understanding anything. There is nothing that someone who is ignorant truly understands. Ignorance gives rise to activity. From activity comes consciousness. From consciousness comes name and form. Once there is name and form, then the six entrances, the six sense organs of the body, eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body, and mind come about. From the six sense organs comes contact. Once there is contact, there is feeling. From feeling is brought forth craving, and because of craving, there is grasping. Grasping leads to existence. When there is existence, there is future rebirth. Birth is followed by old age and death. So, these travelings of conditioned co-production flow in succession. They are produced one right after the other. The first is ignorance. If there is no ignorance, there won't be any activity. If there isn't any activity, then there won't be any consciousness. If there is no consciousness, then there is no name and form. With no name and form, there won't be the six sense organs. Without the six sense organs, there can't be any contact. Without contact, there can't be any feeling. Without feeling, there is no craving. With no craving, there is no grasping. With no grasping, there is no existence. When there is no existence, then there won't be future births. And without birth, there can't be any old age or death. So the principle here is very simple, but those who truly understand it are very few. If in a single thought there is no awakening, then the three fine marks are produced and one is covered over by ignorance. And it is just because of one unenlightened thought that there is no ignorance. From that there arise 
the three fine marks, the mark of manifesting, the mark of karma, and the mark of turning. So with respect to ignorance, there has to be true and actual knowledge. One should truly and fully understand ignorance. They have a truly knowledge of the accumulation of ignorance. Ignorance within the truth of suffering should truly and actually be known. Ignorance within the truth of accumulation should also truly and actually be known. A true knowledge of the extinction of ignorance. Ignorance within the truth of extinction should truly and actually be known. And the, the true knowledge of the path that leads to the extinction of ignorance. Ignorance within the truth of the methods that lead to extinction should truly and actually be understood. If there can be true knowledge of it, then one can break through ignorance and there won't be any trouble at all. They have a true knowledge of craving, a true knowledge of the accumulation of craving, a true knowledge of the extinction of craving, and a true knowledge of the path that leads to the extinction of craving. Why do we turn in the six paths? is because of one thought of ignorance that we get involved in activity. Why is it that we get involved in activity and turn in the six paths? It's because of craving and love. If one understands how this craving is produced and what relationship it has with ignorance and the truths of suffering, accumulation, extinction and the methods that lead, that lead to the extinction of this craving, that one won't have to flow and turn within any of the six paths of rebirth. But one's understanding has to be genuine and unobstructed. Those enlightened to conditions cultivate these 12 links of conditioned co-production and understand that this is, this is how it all begins. It all begins because there is ignorance, so they don't conduct their activities through ignorance. I always say this about ignorance, but people still don't know what I mean. What is ignorance? I'll tell you very clearly again. Ignorance is just when you say, I don't know, that's ignorance. Whenever anyone says, I don't know, that's ignorance manifesting. That's what ignorance is. If you don't know, then why do you do the things you do? If you don't know, then why do you do things that are upside down? It's just from ignorance. So when you do things, don't use I don't know to conduct yourself. If you use the mind of I don't know to do things, that's just being upside down. Now that we're explaining the Avatam Saka Sutra, you have to have true and actual knowledge. You have to truly and actually understand what is going on. If you have understand and have don't understand, that's just being ignorant. If it seems like you don't, uh, you know but don't really know, that's just ignorance. Those of us who investigate the Buddha Dharma have to break through our ignorance so that the Dharma nature can be revealed. If one is able to break through ignorance, one won't be upside down. If one is able to reveal the Dharma nature, one will be intelligent and one will give rise to wisdom. The place where you apply effort is right before your eyes. You don't have to be far off to find what you should do. Some people still don't understand ignorance. They say, ignorance is I don't know, and I don't know is ignorance. Then why is it called ignorance and not I don't know? Well, I tell you now, and then you understand. When you are asleep, that's called ignorance. When you wake up, that's called I don't know. Sutra they have a true knowledge of sound hearers, a true knowledge of the dramas of sound hearers, a true knowledge of the accumulation of sound hearers, and a true knowledge of the nirvana of sound hearers. Commentary They have a true knowledge of sound hearers. A sound hearer is one who has enlightened to the way upon hearing the sound of the Buddha, which sound of the Buddha has he awakened to. 
He has awakened to the way through the Dharma of the Four Holy Truths. The Four Holy Truths are suffering, accumulation, extinction, and the way. He has a true natural understanding of these types of Dharmas. You also have a genuine, reliable, and thorough understanding. This understanding shouldn't be skin deep or superficial. It should reach to the heart of the matter, the true and actual nature. A true knowledge of the dharmas of sound hearers. You should really truly know the dharmas which are cultivated by a sound hearer. A true knowledge of the accumulation of sound hearers. You should also have a genuine understanding of the nature of beckoning, of accumulation. You should know how to cut off affliction, certify to body and attain nibbana. So the text goes on to say, and a true knowledge of. The nirvana of sound hearers. They also know which dharma the sound hearer cultivates to attain nirvana. That is the nature which is neither produced nor extinguished. The bodhisattvas have a reliable understanding of how the sound hearers obtain the four virtues of nirvana, which are permanence, bliss, true self, purity. They profoundly understand this at all times. Sutra. They have a true knowledge of solitarily enlightened ones, a true knowledge of the dharmas of solitarily enlightened ones, a true knowledge of the accumulation of solitarily enlightened ones, and a true knowledge of the nirvana of solitarily enlightened ones. They have a true knowledge of bodhisattvas, a true knowledge of the dharmas of bodhisattvas. A true knowledge of the accumulation of bodhisattvas and a true knowledge of nirvana of the nirvana of bodhisattvas. Commentary: They have a true knowledge of solitarily enlightened ones. A solitarily enlightened ones, one is one who has become enlightened on his own. He has suddenly awakened and penetrated through to understanding. He understands the great function and the entire substance of the nature. He understands the external and internal manifestations and the subtle and cause aspects of all the myriad things. Solitarily enlightened is another name for the conditionally enlightened one. They are both enlightened to conditions. When a Buddha is in the world and speaking the Dharma, people who become enlightened upon hearing the Dharma of the travelings of conditioned co-production are called those enlightened to conditions. When there is no Buddha in the world, there are still people who cultivate the travelings of conditioned co-production. They cultivate on their own, become certified on their own, enlightened on their own, and finish their own business. They are called solitarily enlightened ones. Those solitarily enlightened cultivate the travelings of conditioned co-production. In springtime, they see the white flowers blossom. In the fall, they see the myriad things decay and winter, away, and wither away. Observing this process whereby things are born and die naturally, they suddenly open great enlightenment. So they are called. Solitarily enlightened ones. We should also genuinely understand how they become enlightened and realize the fruit. They have a true knowledge of the dharmas of solitarily enlightened ones. How is it that one becomes solitarily enlightened? We should contemplate how they become enlightened to the twelve links of conditioned co-production. We should understand this very truly and clearly. They have a true knowledge of the accumulation of solitarily enlightened ones. How is it that the solitarily enlightened one can cut off accumulation? How is it that they cut off afflictions that must together? You should understand this thoroughly too. This is not to say you look into the afflictions that solitarily enlightened ones have once they have satisfied to that state. Rather, it means you look into how they cut off afflictions and thereby are satisfied to the fruition of solitarily enlightened ones. It's true that solitarily enlightened ones still have afflictions, but those afflictions are very fine and minute. 
not at all like the afflictions that ordinary people have. Some people are, for instance, always getting angry. People who get angry have affliction. They should investigate why it is that people have anger and affliction. It's because people with this kind of affliction are very selfish. If they weren't selfish, they wouldn't have afflictions. If you weren't selfish, then even if people scolded you, you wouldn't get afflicted. The reason they get upset is because we are selfish. Why do we we give rise to afflictions? It's because we try to use our afflictions like a shield to protect our own egos. We put up this shield of anger or some other affliction with the hope that we won't get harmed or have to take a loss. In fact, this is completely the wrong way to go about it. If you aren't selfish, then what is the ego? Who is the I you are trying to protect without self and others? Contemplate at ease. Where there's no emptiness or form, feel the thirst come one. If you want to cut off afflictions, you will first have to cast aside your selfishness. Those who are solitarily enlightened have done so. They have an understanding of the truth of accumulation. They have cut off afflictions. Once one renounces selfishness, one can come to truly know what it means to open-minded and unselfish, to be straight and upright and not at all prejudiced. This is the understanding of the accumulation of solitarily enlightened ones. And they have a true knowledge of the nirvana of solitarily enlightened ones. The nirvana which solitarily enlightened ones certify to is nirvana with residue. With residue means that although they have entered birth and death, there are still some habits, afflictions, and ignorance remaining. Sound hearers and solitarily enlightened ones have entered share section birth and death but not trained birth and death. What is share section birth and death? It refers to each individual's share and section. One's share refers to one's physical stature. One's section refers to one's lifespan. But uh, your six feet and my seven or eight feet and our individual lifespans are all empty and false. So the sound hearers and solitary enlightened ones have cut off share section birth and death. However, they still have to undergo change birth and death. One should genuinely possess a true knowledge of the nirvana of solitarily enlightened ones. They have a true knowledge of bodhisattvas. A bodhisattva is one among sentients that has awakened. Also one who awakens those with sentience. You should definitely know how to recognize a bodhisattva. To understand a bodhisattva, one first should have a true knowledge of the dramas of bodhisattvas. If one doesn't understand the dramas bodhisattvas cultivate, then one won't truly understand the bodhisattva. What are the dharmas that bodhisattvas cultivate? They cultivate the six paramitas and the 10,000 practices. There are two ways of looking at this. Outside, there are six paramitas and 10,000 practices. And inside, there are six paramitas and 10,000 practices. If you only think about teaching and transforming living beings on the outside, but don't try to save the 84,000 living beings in your own self-nature, then you aren't really crossing over living beings. The Bodhisattva first vows to cross over the limitless living beings in his own self-nature. I vow to cross over the living beings of my own self-nature. I vow to cut off the affliction of my own self-nature. I vow to study the Dharma doors of my own self-nature. I vow to accomplish the Buddha way of my own self-nature. Crossing over the living beings of one's own self-nature is putting an end to change birth and death. What is change birth and death? It is the continual arisal and cessation of thoughts. As long as production and extinction have not stopped, one continues to revolve in the six paths of rebirth. 
but when the living beings of the self-nature are crossed over, then the chain to birth and death is ended. So you should understand how a bodhisattva cuts off the truth of accumulation. They have a true knowledge of the nirvana of bodhisattvas. They know how a bodhisattva has realized nirvana without residue and certify to the four virtues of nirvana, which are permanence, bliss, true self, and purity. You should have the wisdom and knowledge to know how it is that the bodhisattva is certified to nirvana without residue, how it is that they have cut off change, birth, and death, how it is that they have accomplished all of this. You should understand all of these dharmas. Sutra, what do they know? They know that they are brought about from causes, conditions, and karmic retribution of all activities. Everything is empty, false, and devoid of actuality. There is no self and nothing substantial. There is not the slightest drama which can be established. Commentary, the treasury of wisdom is the understanding of everything. So the question is asked, what do they know? What is meant by knowing? This is also a rhetorical question. They know that they are brought about from causes, conditions, and karmic retribution of all activities. They know that all living beings produce delusion, act out karma, and undergo retribution. So their existence, uh, uh, existence, so their existence is based on the causes and the conditions which lead to these activities. One endowed with the treasury of wisdom understands all causes and conditions and all karmic retributions. It is said, whatever cause is planted leads to whatever fruit is reaped. Whatever karma is done leads to a corresponding retribution which must be undergone. Everything whatsoever comes about from this process of producing delusion, creating karma and undergoing retribution. There are various kinds of activities and each activity arises due to various causes and conditions. All activities come about from the interaction of causes and conditions. However, the arisal of causes and conditions itself is basically empty. It is said, dramas produced from causes and conditions are all empty. They are given false names but are also called the meaning of the middle way. Everything is empty, false and devoid of actuality. Of all the 10,000 things in the world, there's not a single one that is true. Therefore, one doesn't need to be attached to them. Our bodies are also false. We shouldn't work so hard for the sake of this false shell. This stinking skin bag. Our bodies are false, but our self-nature is true. The self-nature within the body is like a person wearing clothes. The body is like the clothes, whereas the self-nature is like the person. We shouldn't forget about the person and only pay attention to the clothing. There is no self and nothing substantial. Our bodies are not actually us. All of our possessions are not actually ours. Nothing is solid. Everything is impermanent. Since it is impermanent and not substantial, what are you doing being attached to it? What use does your attachment serve? There is not the slightest dharma which can be established. There is not even the slightest true and natural dharma which really exists. All of them are empty and impermanent. All are produced through causes and conditions. You must see through them and put them down and then you can obtain comfort.